Good after Morgan and welcome back to the channel. Why am I rebuilding the drive shaft? To prevent this. And eventually this from happening. Another one of those while you're in there jobs. Not forgetting the center support bearing as well. Whilst my flex disc looks pretty good, most of the work needed to get the subframe out also allows you to get the drive shaft. And while we're in here, we'll replace the support bearing too. And with the drive shaft out, here's what we're going to do. Carefully remove the flex disc. Split the drive shaft here. And remove the CV joint to the diff. Not forgetting to paint mark both sides of each joint so that the drive shaft can be reassembled in the correct orientation and keep the balancing settings done by the factory. We'll also replace this pilot bearing in the middle of the flex disc as well. So here's the drive shaft and let's break it down. In these next few clips it's going to look like I don't know what I'm doing. And that's simply because I don't know what I'm doing. So let's count in the number of attempts I needed to crack this bolt of doom. Ein. Zwei. Try. Fear. Fünf. Six. Sieben. Acht. Neun. Zehn bis fünfzehn. Sechzehn. Und siebzehn. And this is why I never throw anything out. Although the bolt is actually loose at this point, it's still trapped within the drive shaft. But the persuader will sort that out.
This persuader is made from hide, so it shouldn't damage the drive shaft. And finally, it's split. And I get my spanner back. We're going to replace this bolt. And the bent washer as well. This is the paint marker I used, and I really don't want to mess up the drive shaft reassembly. Now it's time to pull the center bearing, and I'm continuing to film all my struggles, so you don't have to. I decided to cut the rubber part of the bearing out to make the pull a bit easier. Definitely can't reuse it now. Now it's time for the flex disc, or as some people call it, the guibu, aka the donut. At face value it looks serviceable, but on closer inspection you can see this donut it's past its sell by date. Last but not least, it's time to remove the CV joint. Find the circlip, throw it away, and simply pop the joint.
Oops, forgot about the pilot bearing. Just need to measure its position so that the new one goes back into exactly the same place. Vier millimeter. Now, I was really excited to try the pilot bearing removal trick of hammering bread into the middle of the bearing, but I had a massive GoPro fail. When you think the camera is in video mode, but it's actually in picture mode, you get the first scene and you get the last scene and you miss the entire process. But I promise you it worked and I got the GoPro back into video mode so you can see the removed pilot bearing. And the bolt that I used to hammer in some plain white bread. Which compresses surprisingly well and pushes on the back of the pilot bearing. And simply pushes it out. Now I'm going to make some attempt at trying to tidy up the drive shaft itself and it looks like it was hitting the dust shield at some point and has worn away quite a bit of the paint. So we'll fix that and just slap some hammerite on it. Somehow, with minimal effort, this does look a lot better. And once installed, will never be seen again. <laughs> Let's unbox the new flex disc. And we'll come back to this in a minute. Time for the new pilot bearing. Not much to it. Some more of our assembly loop. And mark the depth we want before we tap it in. Recheck the measurement, and it's as good as new. And here's another BMW OEM part number trick. Here's the original Guibo on the left with the BMW logo. Here's the Febby branded replacement Guibo on the right. Exactly the same part number on both. And some bugger scraped off the BMW logo on the Febby one. Some minor updates here and there, but it's exactly the same part at a third of the cost of BMW. And Febby even provide all the hardware too. Two different boat lengths. And a small paint dab to tell them apart.
and this time I am using the instructions because the Guibo is sensitive to premature failure if you don't assemble the bolts in the correct orientation. You also need to ensure the Guibo sectors are correctly aligned with the gearbox and the drive shaft, which the instructions clearly show by the design of the Guibo. There's also loads of information online on forums, which really helped my understanding, and I couldn't explain it any better than it has been done on Bimmerfest, for example. Now, let's measure up the centre support bearing, so I can select the right size of cup to act as a drift. Don't forget to make sure it actually slides over the drive shaft. And then some scotch bright. And 800 grit sandpaper. To clean up the surface where the bearing's going to be located. Make sure you get the bearing the right way around. And it slides really easily into place. But there's always time for some love taps. And the new bearing runs nice and smooth. Not forgetting the dust shield, which gets sandwiched between the universal joint, located here. And assembled here. Now let's unbox the new CV joint, which comes with everything you need to build a new part. CV grease, but I didn't think much of the included gasket, so I bought a genuine BMW one. This is the combined metal rubber gator, and then the ball bearing CV itself. And we'll start by applying a thin bead of Loctite onto the bearing casing to help secure the gator cap. Some more love taps. And we secure the cap onto the joint casing. And I've placed the studs in here loosely just to help make sure that everything is aligned. And here's a quick comparison of the supplied gasket. Versus BMW OE. For a few cents more.
another small dab of Loctite on the studs and they can get love tapped into place too. You can buy this CV joint pre-assembled, but it's a lot cheaper this way. And admittedly, a lot more fun too. Another reason for going with an OE gasket is that it's self-adhesive. And that completes the assembly of the new CV joint. And here's a short clip of the old one, just to make you feel better about why you do these while you're in their jobs. <laughs> and reassembly is reverse of removal. What a classic quote. Just make sure you line up the splines and it goes easily into place. and the supplied new circ clip, make sure that CV joint is properly located. And now we can fit the supplied clamp, which holds the gator in place onto the drive shaft. And then a quick test to make sure the rubber gator is securely held. All shiny and new, just gives you that warm fuzzy feeling. And now all we have to do is pack the new CV joint with some CV grease. And that means we're ready to install the drive shaft back into the car. But we can't do that until we actually install the subframe. But you'll be happy to hear that's exactly what we're going to install in episode 11. However, we're taking a short break and we're going to the Nürburgring next time where I experience my first TF session. So a big thank you to all my new subscribers and see you next time on the Nürburgring Nordschleife.